In second grade, emphasis on speaking and learning to read in English intensifies. At our school, we have them divided into three groups for English immersion. I have the beginning level. Just a second, Jesus. The next page, are you ready? Here we go. So we're going over all day long how to decode the words, how to define what these words mean, how to write in English. And they've come a long, long ways. Let's see if you can remember, what is the sign for cat? If you remember it from yesterday, show me the sign language sign for cat. She tickled him. Who can tell me? What does tickled mean? Who could show me? Yolanda, show me what tickling would be. Do you use your hands when you tickle? Okay. And what do you, when you tickle someone, what do they do? If you tickle someone, what do they do? They giggle. They giggle. They giggle. Most of the students in Nancy Morosi's class have either transferred from a bilingual education program at another school or recently arrived in the United States. Do your parents like you to speak English? Yeah. Yes. Mine do. Tell me. Mine do. Why? Uh, because they want, me to, they want me to read, write, and like to, like, to speak English better, to, like, to talk a lot better in English. Why do they want you to do that? Because I was in Mexico and I, and I didn't know how to read. Like, read in English and write in English and speak English. And, and, but you learned and you're only in second grade? Yeah. Is it hard to learn English? No. No? No. How about your mother and father? Do they speak English? Uh, my sister and my brother do, but my, not my mom. Do you worry that the kids will, will lose their Spanish? I uh, don't worry too much because most of these boys and girls have Spanish at home. They are getting a lot of Spanish at home. I've had parents in the past tell me they're concerned because their children start using English at home and they feel like there's a separation between them. What do I say to a parent who gets worried? Uh, I usually tell them to encourage their children to continue to know both English and Spanish because it's very important to know two languages. So you're teaching math? Yes, this is math. But are you teaching... Lots of oral language also in math. Are you teaching English at the same time? All day long. All day long. Everything is in English. Boys and girls, this week we've been talking about fractions. Remember we were talking about fractions? We have two words here, numerator and denominator. So if we have a set of six children, my denominator can be six. Tang, what part of my set are girls? Three. So three out of the six. So what is my fraction? Three six. Three six are girls. Good. If you have... Hair that sticks up a little Marlene bit. Marlene Manley is teaching her fourth graders to follow directions. For her new students, it's also a basic English lesson. Supporters of English immersion claim that it has another important advantage. It works with students from many language backgrounds. We have one student who's new to this country for about two weeks ago. He got here from Vietnam. And he does. we do have a Vietnamese aide who is helping instructional assistant and takes him to the side and re-explains what I've already explained. So not only is he hearing it first in English, but then he's hearing it in his native language also. That's the young boy over there. Right. I was watching him, he looks lost. Right, he does look lost, but he was, as he watched the students around him, he was able to do the action. Forward. Hands behind you. Hands up, hands down, hands forward. Oh, listen with your ears as I'm telling you the direction. And so when he, it's only his second week here, and so as he starts hearing what I'm saying and watching the other students as they're reacting to me, he's going to be able to pick them up, and he is getting a lot of extra help. Students at Taft do acquire English skills. Taft has some of the highest test scores in the entire Santa Ana School District and the school promotes English immersion as a model for the entire state. But just as there are examples of bad bilingual education, bad immersion programs exist, ones which simply drop kids into English-speaking situations and expect them to learn English. That is what happened to Jackie Dominguez as a kindergartner. Well, the first time I cried, you know, because I didn't even know what they, what they were saying, you know, so I was, like, nervous. Scared. But I got, yeah, I got over with it's it, like you're taking the opportunity of their su success away right there as a child. You're telling them, 
Spanish is bad. I once interviewed a, a, a colleague for an article. He had a wonderful story. He talks about the importance of bilingualism and biculturalism in education. And he said, you know, I came to kindergarten and I walked in with my maleta, which means suitcase. And he said, and it was filled with all my treasures, my language, my experiences, my stories. But when I got to kindergarten, they didn't let me use any of them. And moreover, they didn't even let me bring my mallet into the classroom. And, and I think what he was describing so profoundly was that experience of n never being able to insert myself, my own social and cultural and linguistic experiences into this process that must be a facing over time. But Gloria Mata Tuckman maintains that the school's primary responsibilities are to teach students to read, write, and speak English. I feel it is the family's responsibility to maintain the home language. Yes, the culture and home language. Appreciation and respect for someone's culture and language is something else. 